Hello everybody and welcome back to Radiology Tutorials. Today we are going to be discussing gout and if you have a look at this x-ray this is a classic picture of gout arthropathy and I want to take you through a couple of x-rays today that will show you what features to look for that will make you confidently say this is gout versus some form of other arthropathy. And before we go through those uh, images I first want to discuss what exactly gout is, who actually gets gout and what's the natural history of the disease in patients. So what exactly is gout? Well, it fits under this umbrella term of crystal arthropathies, and there are many crystal arthropathies, but gout and CPPD are by far the most common causes of crystal arthropathy. And here we have a picture of the monosodium urate crystals that have been aspirated out of the synovial fluid of a patient with gout. Now when you ask many people what exactly is gout, they mention that there's elevated levels of serum urate. And that is true, a patient who has gout needs to have periods of elevated serum urate. But the vast majority of patients who have high urate levels will never go on to develop gout. Patients who have high urate levels can be predisposed to then developing monosodium urate crystals in the blood and then depositing those crystals into tissues. And it's this formation and deposition which leads to the sequelae of clinical gout. So once we've deposited those crystals in the soft tissues of a patient, the body will then have an acute inflammatory response. So patients will often present with a swollen, painful red joint. And if that happens often enough, we start getting chronic inflammatory changes within the patient. And it's this triad, it's the high levels of urate, the monosodium urate formation and deposition, and the inflammatory response that gives us the clinical syndrome of gout. Now there are many modifiable and non-modifiable risk factors that will predispose someone to developing gout and they're listed here and you can screenshot these for future use if you want or write them down. But gout generally occurs almost on a nine to one basis in men over women. And that's because men have a naturally higher level of serum urate because they don't have estrogen which is a naturally uh, which lowers serum urate and that's why women who are postmenopausal will get almost comparable levels of gout to men in the ninth and tenth decades of life. As someone ages their risk of gout goes up and certain ethnicities will have high levels of gout like Pacific Islanders or certain groups of Caucasian men. And there's many genetic predisposing factors mostly to do with the production of urate or the excretion of urate and there's over 200 genetic loci or SNPs that or identify that predispose someone to developing gout. Interestingly enough, patients who smoke or drink coffee on a regular basis actually tend to have lower levels of gout than those who don't. So gout follows this predictable course. We have this prolonged asymptomatic period of five to ten years where we've got elevated le levels of serum urate but we don't have any clinical features of gout and then, all of a sudden, someone will develop acute gouty arthritis. They will get a swollen, red, painful joint where the body has now developed an inflammatory response to those monosodium urate crystals. And this is what's known as acute gouty arthritis, the second stage of gout. Now, this must be self-limiting. They must then be followed by a period of asymptomatic and asymptomatic interval. And this is one of the key features of gout. Many other arthropathies will have consistent pain a persistent pain and gout has these periods of acute flare-ups and then asymptomatic intervals and a patient can go in between these two stages of gout for a long period of time with varying lengths of asymptomatic interval between patients and eventually with uh, left untreated and um, gout can then go on to, de to develop this chronic tophaceous gout where we get fibrous tissue deposition, we get chronic swelling of the joints with tophus formation and potential calcification of the tophi around those joints. So let's have a look at our first image and discuss some of the key radiological features of gout. Now firstly, gout generally predominates in the lower extremities. It happens more in lower extremities than it does in the upper extremities. Not to say it can't happen in the upper extremities. And crucially, the joint space, especially in early gout, is preserved. Unlike many arthropathies which uh, obliterate that joint space, the joint space is preserved until late in the disease. And in many cases of gout, or in most cases of gout, the bone density is normal. We don't doesn't really happen in osteopenic bones. That's not a predisposing factor. We generally have a patient with healthy bones that has uh, features of arthropathy on an x-ray. So the key features for gout here is an eccentric lesion, so off-center, juxta-articular lesion, 
that has this punched out appearance that we can see here and the sclerotic margin forming here. And when we get this punched out lesion next to a joint with the sclerotic margin, what we often see is this overhang of bone here. This is quite typical of gout. So we have a punched out lesion that's got a sclerotic margin and an overhanging bone on the side with a preserved joint space. And commonly, as we can see in this patient, we have soft tissue swelling here. So this is not normal soft tissue around these joints. And these likely represent TOFI in this patient. This patient probably has chronic tophaceous gout. Now let's go on to another x-ray. Here we're in the hand to show it can happen in the upper extremities. Again, maintain bone density. And here we can see that the joint space has actually been obliterated. There's been quite a lot of destruction of bone. But again, what we can see is a punched out lesion with sclerotic margins that are uh, eccentric lesions, juxta-articular, and uh, minimal soft tissue swelling here. But again, very suggestive of gout. This lesion with this punched out lesion looks very much like gout. And we must be careful here not to have satisfaction of search. We must see at the bottom here, we can see again a soft tissue swelling, likely re representing a tophus as well as what looks like a pathological fracture of the ulnar styloid. And why I say it's pathological is if you look closely, we again have a punched out lesion here with a sclerotic margin and soft tissue swelling. So we can't see a, a lesion on an x-ray and not observe the entire x-ray for more features. And here, if you get an x-ray like this, this is classic of gout. So we've looked at two smaller joints. Let's go to a larger joint. And this is a slightly more subtle image, but again, it's in the lower extremity and we have a person with normal bone density. And again, the joint space here is completely normal. There's no obliteration of the joint space. We've got a nice equal joint space, but we have this punched out lesion with a sclerotic margin and a bony overhang. We can see just on the side as well, in the large joint, we've got a little bony overhang, punched out lesion with a sclerotic margin, very minimal soft tissue swelling. And a patient like this, you would likely say this is suggestive of gout. There are many other things that can look like this and would need further clinical workup to confirm your suspicion of gout, which this patient did have um, an aspirate had monosodium urate crystals evidence. And then we go back to the first image that I showed you at the start of this lecture. And hopefully by now you can look at this image and say, this is definitely gout, it's gout all day. Um, so we've got asymmetric distribution of the lesions. That's another key feature of gout. It doesn't have to be symmetrical. If it affects your um, metacarpal on your left side, it's not going to necessarily affect the same metacarpal on the right side. And again here, we've got juxta-articular lesions with preservation of the joint space, nice healthy bones, no um, osteopenia in the background. We've got soft tissue swelling with some calcium deposition here, the large tophus on that side. We've got uh, these punched out lesions with overhanging pieces of bone and a sclerotic margin. Again, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but when you see these features, gout needs to shoot to the top of your differential, especially when you have a patient that presents with predisposing factors, your pretest probability is even higher then, and you can more commonly look at an x-ray like this and say, that's gout versus some other arthropathy. So I hope you've learned something today. I hope you'll feel more confident when looking at joint x-rays and deciding whether something is gout or whether it's not. So I'll see you all in the next lecture. I've really enjoyed sharing some of this information with you. I'd love to hear from you below what other diseases you would like to hear about next. Until next time, goodbye everybody.